Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Today we're looking at a new flagship graphics card from MSI in their Lightning series. This is the R9 290X Lightning. This takes the highest end GPU from AMD, the Hawaii based R9 290X, and applies the Lightning touch to it, if you will. This is a hyper-engineered graphics card, totally unique PCB design, lots of extra power, lots of extra cooling, all meant to appease to super high-end enthusiasts and overclockers. If we look at the card itself, uh, you can tell immediately that this is a much different cooler than what you were getting with the reference design. It is a two and a half slot or three slot design. It's going to take up three slots of space on your motherboard, even though the bracket on it itself is only uh, two slots. So keep that in mind for installation compatibility issues. There are five heat pipes running through this heat sink. It's enormous. Even though the G there's only one GPU on this card, the heat sink uh, and fans span the entire length of the board. Uh, it does have a tri-fan design. The two fans on the outside are larger. The yellow fan in the middle is smaller. You can control the fan speeds independently, but the, uh, we found that the one in the middle is quite a bit louder than the ones on the outside because it's smaller and it's spinning a little bit faster. So hopefully we can play with the fan speeds on that and adjust some if need be. Power connectivity is uh, there are a pair of eight pin and a single six pin power connector. The six pin is kind of optional, although I imagine most people that are buying this are going to plug it in anyway. You probably have a power supply that can handle it. There are V checkpoints on the back for monitoring voltages directly on the board. Again, for those people that are doing extreme overclocking, maybe even removing the heatsink and doing LN2. There's a fancy light up lightning logo on the top, which is cool. And then I'm still a fan of the yellow black kind of color scheme that they do here. It's actually pretty nice. Um, also, uh, these are the uh, fans that will spin backwards for the first 10, 15 seconds after you turn them on to kind of help remove dust from them. And so if you happen to notice that behavior, don't worry, it's nothing's not, it's not broken in your system, which it's still kind of unnerving when you see it for the first time. Out of the box performance, this card has a clock speed target of 1080 megahertz. That's only 80 megahertz faster than the reference R9 290X cards. That seems a little low, uh, except for what you, you've got to remember the reference designs in the R9 290X are targeting 1000 megahertz, but they're usually running below that due to temperature issues, right? You know, reference designs were hitting 95C, clocks were going down, voltages were going down to compensate. With these custom coolers, that's not really an issue. Uh, we found even when overclocked, the GPU was staying in the 75 to 78C range, uh, which, is, which is pretty impressive. Speaking of overclocking, we were able to push this with the latest version of MSI's Afterburner software to uh, 1,180 megahertz, so a 100 megahertz boost over out-of-the-box experience. Uh, and we looped through Metro Last Light for quite a while, and that clock speed remained fairly stable. The cooler was more than capable of maintaining the right temperature, a low temperature uh, for the GPU, and maintaining the clock speed. So we didn't see any clock speed variance issues on it quite yet. Um, now, will this card go faster than that, further than that, on terms of overclocking? Possibly. We're going to spend more time with it. Um, we, you know, we're just kind of doing a little preview here for you guys. It's going to be a monster of a card. It's not particularly quiet because of that yellow fan in the middle. Um, and I do wish they would be a little bit more aggressive with the overclock out of the box. But they're leaving room for, obviously, the people that are going to spend this type of money on a video card to get in there and get their hands dirty and actually work with and tweak some things. So we even with the voltage pumped all the way up that Afterburner would allow by default, you know, we were seeing 1180 on that, which is, which is pretty good. It's going to generate a significant performance boost over reference designs, especially if you have a 290X that uses a reference cooler. Uh, this is a large card, though. Make sure you keep that in mind when you're looking in, at installation options. The ASUS DirectCU 2 card, which is also overclocked to a similar amount, and we were able to get close to that with our testing, is smaller by comparison. It's only a two-slot card, uh, and it's just a little bit, quite a bit less bulky, actually. But if you want a flagship, no-limit card on this, I mean, we're, we're going to spend a lot more time with it. We'll have the full review with benchmarks and overclocking results and, and performance as well uh, here in the next week or so. But this is the kind of the flagship of the R9 290X designs pretty clearly already. So uh, check it out at PCPro.com. We'll have more information on this very soon. Uh, thanks, guys.